In addition to the specific nutritional needs of athletes, something else we can look at with nutrition and physical activity is nutrient timing, which basically means what kind of nutrients are important to consume before, during, and after exercise. And that's what we're gonna look at in this section. So before exercise, honestly, we might not need anything. It really depends on how long we're exercising for. If you, for instance, are waking up in the morning and doing a workout, you might feel a lot of gastrointestinal distress, or you might not even be hungry in the morning and consuming something in the morning doesn't make sense to you. Maybe you eat a little bit more going before going to sleep to have the energy for that activity. But it really depends on whether you're trying to gain weight or lose weight. What we have to consider with a pre-exercise meal is we want to make sure we have enough energy to do that exercise, but we also don't want to have any gastrointestinal discomfort. So if someone is exercising for a longer period of time and really does need that extra energy, we recommend mainly a meal that contains carbohydrates. And really it depends on how hard that person is working and for how long that person is working. The recommendation is typically one to four grams per kilogram body weight of carbohydrates in the hours before exercise, but not too close to the exercise itself because, again, that can promote gastrointestinal distress. In general, easily digestible carbohydrates that are actually lower in fiber is what we recommend, again, to minimize the gastrointestinal distress. Also critical, no matter what time of day you're working out, is to make sure we consume enough fluids. Yes, during exercise, but prehydrating can also help you make sure you don't lose so much fluid. Some individuals who are competing in maybe higher level events, uh, perhaps doing a half marathon or a full marathon or like the Grand Fondo or something where they're exercising for more than an hour, might decide to do something called glycogen supercompensation, which you may know by the, the general term carbo loading. And the idea here is that usually people like taper off their training in the days before an event, but they also typically up their carbohydrate intake in those days before the event to maximize their glycogen stores. So they recommend about 10 to 12 grams per kilogram body weight per day in those two days before exercise to again maximize glycogen stores and also maximize time to exhaustion. During exercise most of us don't need anything beyond fluids. We absolutely need fluids and we just recommend drinking fluids liberally to make sure that you don't get uh, dehydrated. Uh, to be sure of how much fluid you need, you can weigh yourself before exercise and after exercise. And let's say you lost a kilogram of weight from the beginning of exercise to the end, you did not lose a kilogram of fat. What you lost was a kilogram of water, which is about a liter of water. Okay, so that gives you an indication of how much water you typically lose. So you can drink that back in the future. For longer bouts of exercise, we do recommend electrolytes because those we also lose during sweat. A lot of like during exercise products, they typically have a lot of these electrolytes to, to, to help individuals. And part of the reason we want to make sure we get enough fluids is we want to stave off dehydration. Dehydration can affect us very negatively and it's one of the main reasons that like a marathon or a big event goes negative. And that's why we sometimes see people leaving this big events in, in a stretcher. Okay, dehydration can negatively affect performance, increases the risk of muscle cramps, more likely to have an increased heart rate as well, and just makes the whole thing so much harder. So make sure you get enough fluids and electrolytes to stave off uh, potential dehydration. During exercise, like I mentioned, most of us do not need a extra energy, especially if we're exercising for less than 60 minutes. However, again, if you're doing a marathon or a Grand Fondo or one of these longer events, you might elect to buy something like this. There's all sorts of different kinds of sports gels and sports gummies and, and all these other things. You don't have to buy anything, you can make them yourself. But usually these concoctions tend to be really high in carbohydrates. That's what we recommend as the main fuel. If you're gonna eat something to exercise, like an easily digestible fuel source, okay? So they recommend about 30 to 60 grams per hour of this easily digestible carbohydrates. And sometimes these sports gels and candies also have vitamins and electrolytes in them as well. After exercise, we have three main priorities. 
protein synthesis, glycogen replenishing, and making sure your fluids are replenished as well, okay? In the first two hours following exercise, protein synthesis tends to occur more rapidly. And that's why getting enough protein following exercise is so important. And getting protein with about 10 grams of essential amino acids is what we recommend. Also, glucose transport into our muscle cells to replenish our glycogen stores, that also increases following exercise. And we recommend in the 30 to 40 minutes, there's like a window, like a 30 to 40 minutes after exercise where this post-exercise meal is the most important. And ideally, with that meal, you drink some water or you drink some other kind of beverage to help replenish your fluids and electrolytes as well.